Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second of four videos in this series where I'm updating an app that I created in a previous series to use iOS 15 APIs. In this video, we'll focus on throwing functions. We'll be refactoring our code to replace our file manager completion handler based read and save functions to use those throwing functions. Now, before I get started, let me request that if you enjoy this video, please leave a comment below and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. Now, as this is a continuation from the previous video, you should just use the code from that completed video from the first one. However, I have also included the completed part of part one, and you can download it from the link in the description below. Our file manner extension uses completion handlers to save and read documents from the file directory. If the read and write functions were making calls to some external service to read and write data, these functions would have to be executing some asynchronous tasks so that we did not carry on until we have received a response back from the service. In iOS 15, there's a new async and await functionality, and I've covered that in one of my earlier videos in the series titled Top Headlines, where I update an iOS 14 app to conditionally use the new SwiftUI concurrency functions. And the reason I'm telling you this is that why I want to make the changes I'm going to do here. And it's because with async and await, you wait and return the results. But if there's an error, you throw an error. The concept of throwing functions may be foreign to some of you, and I have a video that may clarify things for you. So I'll leave a link in the description below. So what I want to do here is to use that concept of returning data instead of a completion handler. And if there are errors, we'll just throw an error. And the only difference is that we'll not be asynchronous calls. So we don't have to use the new async and await API. So let's create a new function and we'll call it the same as the original one, read document but this time without the completion handler. Instead, we're going to return data, but it could possibly throw an error. So before the return, we'll add throws. Then in the body, instead of using completion.success, when you try to extract the data from the contents of the URL, we can simply return it or throw a todo.read error if it fails. So we can just copy the code from our old function and paste it in here and change the successful completion to return data. And if failed, we can throw to do error dot read error. So let's repeat that same process for the save document. But this time we're not going to be returning anything, but it could still cause an error. So we'll need to throw it if it fails. So once more, I can then just copy the same code from our old completion handler based function. And instead of using completion handlers that pass back the error, we just throw the to do error dot save error. If we return now to our view models data store where we call these file manager functions, I'll need to update the load to do's and save to do's functions. So I'm going to create a new function that I'll call load to do's throws. Now let's call our new read document function that throws instead of has a completion handler and we'll pass in the same file name. We get this error that says it can throw, but it's not being marked with try. And this function will either return data or it will throw an error. So we'll need to set up a do catch block for that. And then we'll assign that data to the data variable. Now it might throw an error, so we'll need to preface that with a try. When we catch that error and assign the error type to our app errors publish property, just as we did previously, we can initiate an alert by setting the show error alert to true. 
Now once we are sure we have our data, we can set up a decoder and try to decode it. Now since this fails, we must use another do catch block and catch the error. And this is exactly what we do in our old function, so let's just copy and paste it in here. So let's do the same thing for our save to do's function. This time we'll call it save to do's throws. Again, we'll just copy the code from our previous function and paste it in here because the modification is very minor. First, we'll create an encoder like we did in our previous version and then use a do try catch block to try to encode the data. If that fails, we set our app error to our encoding error and set our show error alert to true. Now, if it doesn't fail, we'll need to decode the data into a JSON string so that we can save it. The difference here now is that instead of using a completion handler version of the file manager save document function, we'll use our new throwing function. And since it will possibly throw an error, we'll enclose it in a do catch block and try to execute it. If it fails, it throws an error. So we can just copy that previous code for our catch block, but we'll need to cast our error as a to do error. Now in content view, we'll need to call this new function the data store dot load to do's throws. Now the save function, however, is called several times and from several locations. So in our data store, since add to do, update to do, and delete to do are now calling this new version, we'll have to update it there. Let's test and stop after each of our actions and rerun again to ensure that the data is being saved. First, let's add something. Great. Let's update. That's persisting as well. And let's delete. Perfect. I've basically updated the to-do app now to use some iOS 15 features that relate to this code, but I want to do more. In our next video, I want to change the way that we edit, add, and delete items in our to-do list. And then in the final video, I want to add a search field so that we can filter the items in our list.